Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone and today I'm going to be sharing with you 10 things that you probably missed in the last developer update. I've just been living for these updates lately. They've been so jam-packed full of new information about the development progress for Coral Island. But this also means that it's very difficult for me to cover absolutely everything included in these updates in a video that's under like 20 minutes. So without any further ado, let's take a look at some of the details that you may have missed in the last update. The first is a variety of NPC walking animations. In the video of the Cherry Blossom Festival, we saw the characters Suki, Valentina, and Archie in action. Suki displayed a strong power walk while both Archie and Valentina were skipping. Additionally, in a previously shared bug of the month, we saw Charles walking down the street in a style of his very own. Based on this, it is likely that there's a variety of walking animations across the cast of NPCs, which may be used to communicate the general personality or vibe of each character. Also in this video, we get to take a look at the idle poses of Valentina and Archie, which are unique to each character. We've also previously seen the idle poses of Sunny, Macy, Sam, and Dinda. And it appears that all of these poses match the character's unique 2D portraits. So it is safe to assume that the rest of the cast will follow suit in their design. Now, why does this matter? Honestly, it's just a nice touch that adds variety, life, and personality to the diverse cast of NPCs. And I've gotta say, I'm a big fan. Next up is water traversal. Yes, I said water traversal, and I'm not talking about diving. Not only can we spot a fast travel pillar on the minimap located in the lake, yes, in the lake, but we can also catch a peek of a ramp or staircase in the top right corner of the cherry blossom video that's actually descending into the water. This, along with a previously shared look at the fishing mechanics where the player is fishing while standing in water, suggests that we will actually be able to traverse some shallow areas within various bodies of water. This could be very useful for fishing, but I wonder what other possibilities this might open for gameplay. The third thing you may have missed in the update is the need for something called travel power, as indicated in the mini-map for fast travel. My personal interpretation of this is that it seems as though there may be a limit to how many times we can fast travel. Perhaps it's a daily limit? I wonder if travel power is something that we need to collect and accumulate, or if it will auto-replenish on a daily basis. Next, we can actually spot quite a few officially unrevealed locations on the fast travel map. On the top left corner, we can see an area which looks like it may be the entrance to the mines. On the southern part of the map, we can spot two new buildings which weren't included on the earlier version of the map of Starlet Town. In this older map, the building shown here on the beach appears to be the beach shack, so that leaves us with both the Coral Inn and the abandoned villa, which are both said to be found in the beach area of the map. So that means that one of these is likely the Coral Inn, while the other is likely the abandoned villa. Interestingly, on this part, of the older map, there was a bridge connecting these two pieces of land. However, in the newer version, there is not. It does, however, seem that we may still be able to access this island as there appears to be some sort of structure on it. Other differences include this updated boat and these two unrevealed buildings. So many mysteries. Next up are the new storage chests spotted in the upgraded coop flow. They're a different color than the ones that we've previously seen. So I wonder if these are either upgraded in quality so that we can store more items in them or if we will be able to color code our storage chests for organizing organizational purposes. I think that having both of these features would actually be really nice, but we'll just have to stay tuned to find out. Another small detail that actually may tell us more than what meets the eye is found in the shop menu at the Carpenters. There is an option to upgrade our player's home, an option to edit our farm buildings, so move and upgrade our barns and coops, but there is also a shop tab. Now, it's likely that this will be where we will buy our initial farm buildings. However, based on Stardew Valley gameplay, it may be a safe guess that we might also be able to purchase just building materials, furniture, and other features for our home interiors, such as windows. With having such a large interior space in our home to decorate, being able to add plenty of windows, furniture, and decor would be ideal. Speaking of farm buildings, the next detail you may have missed is that fodder can actually now be dispensed automatically inside the coops and barns, provided that we have a mill to activate this system. I believe that the newly added wooden bins, as seen in the interior of the upgraded coop, are where the 
feed for our animals will be dispensed. This feature will be really helpful to automate our farms just a little bit. I do wonder if this feature is also available in the first level of the barns and coops, or if we need to upgrade them to level two first to unlock it. The next seemingly tiny detail that you may have missed is the suspicious looking sewer cap in the dump or recycling center. Now, this on its own might not stand out as being anything more than simply decoration. However, on this version of the map of Starlet Town, we can spot a staircase going specifically to what appears to be another sewer cap. Might these grant us access to some sort of underground tunnel network that we can use to travel around the island? Might there be an entire secret system with its own inhabitants underground? Is this another community project that we'll need to address by cleaning them out? The possibilities may be endless, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. One of my personal favorite details that we've actually seen in almost every update are the unique floor mats found within each of the shops and services in Starlet Town. This is likely where our player will go to interact with the UI for that specific building. The clinic, the carpenters, the animal shelter, the salon, socket and pan, the beach shack, the ranch, and the tavern. They all have their very own unique sweet little floor mat and I just love this detail. I think it is so charming. And last but certainly not least is that under the other updates and behind the scenes section, the team shared some very interesting information about the town rank system. One of the ways that we can earn points towards the town rank is by completing sesogen offerings at the temple at the lake. Sesogen is a symbol of Balinese culture and involves offerings made of coconut leaves, colorful flowers, rice, biscuits, sweets, and more. The belief is that you will get good luck and ward off misfortune by making these offerings. Perhaps we'll have to gather a variety of items from around the island and maybe even cook specific recipes and offer them at the temple. I wonder if this is how we'll be able to interact with the goddess of flowers. Let me know what you think about this one as well in the comments below. So those were the 10 main details that I thought you may have missed in the last update, but here's two more mini bonus ones. The first First is that in the cherry blossom video, we can actually see that someone is fishing down in the corner of the shot. And we can also spot some shadows here that look like some sort of lantern or flag decoration for the cherry blossom festival. The other bonus detail is that in the photo of the interior of Starlet Elementary School, we can actually see all four children. We had already seen Archie and Valentina earlier in the update, but here we can also get a look at the 3D character models for Oliver and Zoe. Wow. That was a lot more information from that update. Let me know if you found anything else that I might have missed, and of course, feel free to share any thoughts that you have on what we covered today. And now it's time for your top comments. So very fittingly, these comments were left on my video that covered the November 2021 developer update. The first is from Arised. They said, I wonder if when your character has a child, they will attend the school and or maybe your farmer can teach a lesson on gardening or something. I'm hoping there's something more for our characters to do in the school in terms of interacting with the kids with lessons or something other than just being able to run around inside the building. And this is something I hadn't really thought of initially when looking at the update. I love the interior of the school and I think it really deserves to be visited a lot. So I do hope as well that there is some sort of incentive to bring us in there. I mean, I'm sure there'll be quests and such involving the kids and probably Randy, but I do think teaching a little lesson would be really cute if there's a cutscene for that. I definitely hope that before we have kids or in the case that we choose not to have kids in the game, there will still be incentive for us to visit the school on a regular basis. The next comment is from Ocean Eyes. They said, I've never been so pumped for a game. Thanks for keeping the spark alive. I can't wait to attend the Cherry Blossom Festival for the first time. Honestly, same. I am so hyped for this game. It's absolutely insane. Thank you for supporting my content. And I'm also so excited for the Cherry Blossom Festival. I made the decision that I'm not gonna check it out until the NDA lifts so that we can all discover it together. Ruby said, this game looks so amazing and every update they give us, I love it so much more. I cannot wait for the official release. Oh my gosh, same. And also thank you so much for making these videos. They're so helpful and go into so much depth. Thank you. Thank you. You are all the sweetest, the kindest. Honestly, I'm so happy that they're helpful because I mean, I love making these videos, but I'm so glad that there's other people out there that care about all these details just like I do. Meredith Allen said, thanks for this great overview of the November developer update, Sarah. Totally agree with you. I'm obsessed with the Cherry Blossom Festival boats. They look so magical floating in the lake. Oh my 
my gosh, yes. Melanie is amazing, yes. Melanie is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. I would love to see the flower beard in the game for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely wanting to see someone with a flower beard. So as always, thank you all so much for sharing your thoughts with me in the comments. I absolutely love reading through them and chatting with you all. Be sure to leave your comments down below on this video and maybe you'll be featured in my next. And before I leave you today, let's take a look at today's amazing fan art. Today's amazing fan art is this absolutely adorable artwork of Macy and her pet blue lobster, Steven, done by Bubbly. I have featured her art previously on this channel. I think she's so talented and I absolutely love the art style of this one. I just think it is so cute and sweet. I love the color palette. I love that Steven's included in the shots. I just love everything about this. So be sure to show her some love in the comments down below and thank you so, so much, Bubbly, for sharing your amazing art with us. Well, there you have it, friends. Those were the 10 things that you may have missed in the latest developer update. As always, I super look forward to hearing from you in the comments below. Thank you so, so much for watching. I love you all. And until next time, take care.